833, the manhunt continues for the gunman who opened fire in Times Square on Saturday, injuring three people, including a four-year-old girl from Brooklyn. That little girl expected to make a full recovery thanks to the quick actions of one of the first officers to respond to that scene. I was just treating her as if she was my own child. I really just wanted to get her to the hospital as soon as possible. So when I picked her up, I was either just looking for an ambulance or a police car to get her to the hospital as quickly as I possibly could. Unbelievable quick thinking right there. Investigators have identified the suspect. Now they are working hard to find him. Joining me now with an update and to continue our biweekly conversation about the issues facing New Yorkers is Police Commissioner Dermot Shea. Commissioner, good to see you. Thanks for being here. No, great to see you. And as I see that video, it's just heartwarming. You know, that's that's some of the work that we see, Dan, every day by men and women. Great job by the officer. There. Yeah, I mean, she really jumped right into action. And that brings me to the question of how close are detectives, sir, to making an arrest in this case? What do we know about this suspect? Well, what, I'm just going to keep it simple, Dan. There is not a place on earth that this individual can hide from the members of the detective bureau. They will bring him back to New York City and he will face justice. Do you believe that he's not that he's not actually in New York City? Uh, I will not go into anything further. Wherever he is, he will be found and brought to New York City. Understood. You know, but that shooting really it happened in broad daylight, Commissioner, in Times Square, where there's already a large police presence. You and I, yeah. we keep talking about the ongoing gun violence problem, shooting incidents way up, comparing week to week with last year, they're up 140 percent. We have some of these numbers for you. It's a 202 percent increase when we compare the past 28 days to the same time last period last year. You're very familiar with these numbers. There's been a lot of blame placed on bail reform, but what is being done about the guns and what else can be done? Yeah, well, I mean, I think we know a lot of the obstacles, Dan, and, and the key is really what are you going to do about it? So, you know, we, we, we still have quite a bit of resources here in the NYPD. We have a, a, a class that just came out of the academy, uh, which is a, a real shot in the arm last week. Yeah. They hit yeah. the precincts this week. They haven't hit the street yet, but that's imminent. And, and it's, it's really about Rodney Harrison, Juanita Holmes, Dave Barrera, myself, the entire executive team, um, you know, facing these challenges. And that's exactly what they are. The good news is, though, that, you know, I think we're in a different place where, where we were last year. We certainly have uh, a lot of support. You're mm -hmm. hearing that talk about crime and the pendulum swinging and and we're going to face it head on and we're going to do what we always do and this is the yeah. message the men and women of this police department are never going to back down from a challenge and they're never going to be in a position where they're not there for new yorkers so we'll do whatever we have to do certainly challenging times we're going to need help but I think New Yorkers know that. We'll, yeah. we'll get through it. And certainly the, the issue of crime is, is big on the mayoral campaign race right now, which sure. we're paying close attention to. Last question on the Times Square incident about that individual suspect. I only asked because we talk about bail reform and arresting people, putting them back on the street. Was this individual known to the NYPD? Did he have any priors? He was absolutely known to, uh, you know, some great work by some of the officers. I was there that night. I was in the hospital that night as well, um, talking to the family of the four-year-old girl. But speaking to officers and detectives on the scene, um, that was part of the, the case that was put together. They had an idea of some of the normal players, if you will, in mm -hmm. that area, and that all led to the quick identification. Understood. You know, and, and the violence, sir, not only above ground, but also underground on the subways at a time when ridership, yeah. we're just beginning to see it pick up since the pandemic, which is a good sign, right? But here are some of the numbers. Felony assaults on the subway up 25% year to year, 140% week to week over last year. Now, we keep hearing two different sides of the issue here. Mayor de Blasio says the subways are safe. MTA President Sarah Feinberg called him clueless, accused City Hall of hiding actual NYPD deployment numbers. So let's set the record straight. How many officers are actually in the subways today? I, I think, Dan, uh, you know, we had the City Council hearing yesterday and we publicly gave numbers uh, on the staffing of transit. There's, there's absolutely no hiding regarding, um, you know, we take transparency pretty seriously. What are the numbers? We, we've had, we have over 2,000 officers deployed uh, assigned to the Transit Bureau. We also flush in uh, resources from critical response, from local precincts at times. Yeah, I think we've been pretty active on Twitter showing people how many auxiliary officers mm -hmm. are in there. Um, so there is large amounts of officers on a daily basis, but there's always more to do, Dan. And, and if one New Yorker doesn't feel safe, um, 
because of any number of circumstances on the subway, we have to do more so, with our partners. And that's we know exactly how important the mass transit system is yeah. and the transit system is to New York City as a whole. So and we got we always have to do a better job. When you say more can be done, you know, I spoke with the MTA chairman Pat Foy on Monday right here on the Pixie More News. Yep. He thanked you, by the way, for those additional auxiliary offer officers, but said there needs to be more uniformed full-time officers and mental health resources to help customers and workers feel safe. He actually threw out a number of an additional 600 officers. Is that possible when you say more can be done, that specific number? Well, Dan, the, the balance is um, everything that goes on in New York City, right? As yeah. the city comes yeah. back, you know, um, parades, games, you name it, right? We all want to experience everything and crime that's you know, happening in some other parts of the city. So the, the transit system is incredibly important. It's one part of everything that we're going. Um, when we just had this academy class, I think the number is approximately 80 brand new officers going to the Transit Bureau. Um, you know, I talked to Sarah Feinberg about yeah. that a couple of weeks ago. She wanted more. I would want more if I was her too, but it, it's a balance that we have to strike. So can you so commit to putting more? To pay. I'm sorry? Can you commit to putting more? I, I cannot commit to more out of that academy class. Understood. It's just not possible. There's just too many competing interests right now. You know, now. When you're talking about the academy class. It brings me right to, you know, what we spoke about, which is recruitment. Police exam deadline last week. Very active recruitment effort. I know you extended yes. it. Are you seeing good numbers? How many people actually came forward in terms of recruitment? We're not seeing good numbers. We're seeing great numbers. And I am thrilled to say that. Um, I got to thank, you know, DCAS for waiving the fee, the mayor's office extending it, waiving the fee. I got to give credit to my executive team and the members of this department, the clergy, the community members. Really, uh, you know, I made it a priority back in January. Yeah. We, we talked about this. We're going to do press, I think, next week, Dan, and tell you exactly how many. But when Give me we a heads set, up. Give me a heads up. Uh, we crushed the numbers for recruitment okay. that we were looking yeah. to do. And we specifically crushed... Um, when you look at African American, uh, particularly, w an area that we had, um, you know, had trouble recruiting in the past. Frankly, we are very happy at the preliminary numbers. Always can do more, but we're going to have some really good news, and we're going to share that news with everyone next week. Good. Two more things I want to get to real quick. One of them being the three NYPD officers arrested yesterday on federal corruption charges for taking kickbacks from tow companies that impounded vehicles. Should those yeah. officers be fired? If they are guilty of what's described, the fired should be the least of their concerns. They should spend considerable time in jail. Um, zero tolerance. Um, disgusted by it, really. It, it breaks down the public trust. I, I, I can't say on TV what I think about that one, Dan. I, I will say, just so the public does know, this is a case initiated by the NYPD. It's initiated by our Internal Affairs Bureau, working hand in hand with prosecutors along the way. Um, and we are 100% dedicated to rooting out anyone that is involved in any form of corruption. Um, I, I'm glad that, you know, I've been briefed on this for well over a year. Um, I knew about it, I knew it was coming down. Still disgusted by it. We should have um, zero tolerance, and I know that the men and women of this department feel the same way. Understood. Commissioner Dermot Shea, we are simply out of time this morning. Glad to hear about the recruitment numbers. Looking forward to hearing from you next week about that. Thank you again for being here, as always, for these conversations. They're always Thanks, really Dan. important. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate it.